Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. Scheduled for three three-minute rounds in the Tough Enough 133-pound catch weight bout. Fight fans, it's about to go down. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, undefeated with five wins, fighting out of Army Athletes, Fort Campbell Combatives, Long Beach, California, Ruben Perez. His opponent stands across the cage in the red corner with four wins and one loss. Fighting out of Extreme Couture, Las Vegas, Nevada. Silos Garcia! Your referee in charge of the action inside the cage is Dr. John Quinn. Oh, God. Three three-minute rounds, here we go. Main events of the night. Ruben Perez wearing the white trunks. Silos Garcia is wearing the black and the pink. Fast action here in round number one. Yeah, Perez, you know, obviously the smaller man in there in terms of height, but doesn't look like that in terms of power. Looks very strong in his compact frame. Again, Perez who's wearing the white trunks has a perfect record of 5-0. and oh. Lists his fighting style as modern army combatives. He's been serving for the past five years or so, joined the Army back in 2009. Nice inside leg kick there from Garcia. Garcia trying to use that reach to his advantage, trying to pop out that long jab. Perez doing a nice job, though, keeping his hands high. Even if it looks like his hands are a little bit too high over his head, certainly far better than keeping them too low. Absolutely. Just kick to the body there. Oh! Yeah, it was a good kick to the body, but he even kind of scooped that teep out. I mean, like, the, very fast action here in round number one. Perez now looking for that takedown. He's got the body lock, throws a knee. Garcia does a nice job spinning out of it, though. Perez has been the king of the first round submission so far in his career, but right now, Silos Garcia is up to the test. Garcia's trying to scoop the legs. Perez now looking for that choke. It's an arm and guillotine. Yeah, and he, 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 he abandons that, wisely so. No, no sense in spending unnecessary energy trying to complete a submission that you're not going to be able to complete. Perez doesn't look uncomfortable here on his back. Nope. Looking to mount some offense, perhaps. Moves to full guard. Yep. Don't grab that fence. With the, with the more experienced fighters, they do get the extra time, so... Whereas normally in the earlier fights, we'd be nearing the end of the first round. We've still got a full 60 seconds to go. Three three-minute rounds. Garcia's on top right now. He's wearing the black and the pink. Perez on the bottom and the white. Yeah, Perez looks very, very comfortable on his back, but so far he's not been able to really mount much in terms of a counter attack. Now, oh, there's a nice, nice kick trip. The leg. Yeah, picked that leg as he was as he was trying to escape and just really nicely done by Perez. He wasn't able to capitalize on it, but just showing that he's always looking to mount offense. Well done. Perez holding the center of the cage. Again, he's got to get past that reach on the feet. It's proven to be a difficult task right now. Yeah, Garcia stands at five foot seven. Perez stands at five foot four. Garcia again shoots in, looks for that takedown. Perez stuffs it. Final 10 seconds here of round number one. So far, back and forth, very, very close first round. Stop! I, look, that, that one was a very close first round. I would say that uh, Silos Garcia, in my opinion, gets the nod there, uh, spent most of the round in the top position, got the takedowns that were necessary, but anyone's fight at this point. Yeah, no, 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 definitely a competitive fight. I mean, you're going to the judges' scorecards. I got to give that one to Garcia for the time that he's been top position, but it was back and forth on his feet. 
neither man really establishing a, 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 a utter dominance on the feet there. Obviously, two different styles of body, so they have to have two different styles of attacks and both at their moment. Uh, but overall, a very intriguing first round. I, I'm going to go with Silos Garcia, but uh, listen, Ruben Perez looks every bit the danger that he was touted to be. trying to scoop the legs. Perez now looking for that choke. So far shaping up to be a good main event. One round is in the books. Two rounds to go. Three minutes apiece. That's our format. Three minute rounds here in our main event. We are set to go from round number two. Dr. John Quinn is asking for a towel. He's going to mop up real quick. Make sure that Perez doesn't have too much water on him. Same thing with the ground. Tosses the towel out. Mouthpiece in. We are set to go for round number two here at the Orleans in Las Vegas. It's Dave Fair and John Morgan calling the action with you tonight. Appreciate you guys watching. Some of the best amateur mixed martial artists in the entire world. This is the main event here at Tough Enough. This means a lot to these fighters, means a lot to these fans, and certainly means a lot to these commentators calling this fight as well. Both guys well put together. Both guys having good moments. Garcia shooting and looking for that single leg. Now a double leg gets it. See Perez right away turning to his side there. Locking up the Kimura grip there on that left arm. Let's it go. I like that though from Perez. This time you see, you know, the first round I thought he was a little too complacent on his back. That time he turned immediately and looked for something. It ended up not being there. Um, but I think he's got to be sure that he just doesn't settle on his back and get comfortable there. He wasn't taking a lot of damage in the position in the opening round. And he's not taking a lot of damage here either. But you know, that racks up points in the judges' minds. There's no question about it. Minute has ticked off the clock. Just less than two minutes remaining here in this second round. Garcia doing a nice job maintaining that top position. Perez trying to do something. But so far, this round has been all Garcia in the top position. Even though he's not mounting a lot of offense, speaks volumes getting the takedown and being able to main top control. Yeah, trying to lock in that guillotine choke from the very awkward angle there. He does have it wrapped around, but yeah, that was going to be tough to finish. Well, you see Perez is trying to, he's got the, uh, the right leg there locked up. He's trying to use it to sweep. But he's stuck in this position right now. Silos Garcia is using it to tee off. Perez has to go back to full guard. Yeah, and Garcia is doing a great job. I mean, normally the, the, the shorter, more compact fighter has a bit of a strength advantage on the ground. Garcia is proving that that's just not the case here. He's doing a great job controlling the very stout Ruben Perez and so far is winning this round. Yeah, he's just nullifying everything from on top. You know, we talked about the, the, all the first round finishes that Perez had locked up. But, but see, Los Garcia isn't allowed to do anything. Dr. John Quinn stands him. I'm okay with that. They would spent a lot of time in that position. Not a lot of offense being mounted, so here we go. Let's see what happens. Garcia throws a teep. Check from Perez. Oh. Perez with a head kick. That one is blocked Sneaky by Garcia. Just misses on a big Oh, nice kick to the body there. They're swinging. They're swinging hard, too. That left hand from Garcia connected a bit there on that final exchange. Final 10. Round number two, almost in the books. Perez getting those kicks up there, man. Yeah, it kind of comes, it's almost like a capoeira kick, the way he kind of yeah. leads his body yeah. over. It's, it's kind of interesting to see. Entertaining round number two, but in my opinion, another round going to the way of Silos Garcia. Yeah, I completely agree with you there. I like what I saw from Ruben Perez there to close the round, to be Not honest with you. Um, you know, obviously he's had so much success oh, with his submission game early in his career. I think he feels comfortable on the ground, but what he's found right now is his equal on the floor. He's not able to mount any offense from his back whatsoever. And I think if you're in his corner right now, you got to be saying, look, Ruben, you're, you're down two rounds to none right now. The only way you're going to get this done is just to just kind of stir things up on the feet. Garcia shooting and looking for that single leg now. Double leg gets it. Watch a replay of the action here. And again, Silos Garcia was just doing such a fantastic job of nullifying everything. Again, I like the aggression I saw right away from Ruben Perez, but then after he turned to that initial Kimura and it wasn't there, he just settled back down on his back. So we've got one final round to go here, John. I mean, we know that when it goes to the ground, it certainly seems to be Silos Garcia's game, or at least he's able to nullify any offense that Ruben Perez is able to mount. This round, in my opinion, is a round that uh, Ruben Perez in the white trunks here has got to 
really attempt to keep standing up because that's the only place he can win this fight. I completely agree with you. And that's not to say that he's got a huge advantage on the feet. Silas Garcia is doing a fantastic job on the feet. It's just that Silas has been able to nullify everything on the floor. This is at least an opportunity for Perez. Yeah, I guess it's kind of a tall order when you're going up against a taller opponent to stay on your feet to win the fight. When your whole bread and butter has been winning by submission, you've got a guy that has a huge reach advantage peppering you with strikes. Yep. Perez looking for a takedown here, but again, Garcia does a great job turning him into the cage, putting him on his back, and then here we go. I was going to say, I mean, had Perez been able to nail that takedown, we haven't seen him in top position. You know, maybe his top game would have been a little bit more dangerous. But I, I think right now, Silas Garcia has got to know that he's up two rounds to none. And I'm not saying he's just going to cruise and not do anything here, but he's got to know, hey, listen, if I just stay busy enough to keep this position, I'm walking away with this very important victory. Yeah, I mean, you, you see him looking at the corner there. You see him checking the uh, the big screens here in the uh, in the arena to see how much time is left. I think that if you're, it's a smart play, much like taking the knee in football when there's, you know, 35 seconds left and you're up by a single score, you kind of, you don't want to cruise necessarily because you want to make a statement, but he's up two rounds to none. You don't want to put yourself in danger where you could potentially get knocked out. There's 90 seconds remaining. You see the referee there. Dr. John Quinn is walking over saying, you've got to work. You've got to make some motions to, uh, to advance your position. Otherwise, I'm going to stand you up. Just over a minute remaining here in the third and final round, and it looks like Carlos Garcia oh. is doing, well, no, it looked like he was doing just enough to stay in that position. Dr. John Quinn disagrees, he stands him up. Not yeah, mad at that. I, I was gonna say, it was one of those borderline calls right there, and listen, when they only have three minutes to work, I, I'm okay with a little bit faster stand-up sometimes. In a five minute round, I, oh, oh, did man. the knee land? Okay, so this is something very important to note. In amateur mixed martial arts, you cannot throw a knee to the head of an opponent. That was very, very close. It looks like Silos Garcia is okay, but boy, it looked like that connected. Stop, stop, stop. Gonna get a timeout here. Referee's gonna separate him. I like it, I like it. Kind of driving the action. This is the main event of the night. People came here to see stop, a fight. Stop, Don't let him stall. That looked like a Got shot to the nuts. I think he's okay, but certainly Dr. John Quinn did the right thing by calling a timeout. Just about 30 seconds remaining here in this third and final round. And here we go. Last half minute of the fight. Less than that now. Here we go. Silos Garcia once again pushing forward, looking for that takedown. Landing big shots. Garcia looks great in this fight. Just Boy, everywhere fantastic. it goes. Final 10 seconds. Perez is pushing forward, trying to mount some offense here, but every single thing that he does, Garcia has an answer for. Excellent performance from Garcia. Ruben Ooh, Perez on an unofficial and Silas Garcia. Has just improved his record to five and one and dealt Ruben Perez his first loss of his career. Yeah, you know, listen, I like what I saw from Ruben Perez. He certainly has some potential as well. Um, but listen, he just ran into somebody that was a little bit tougher and a little bit sharper tonight. Silos Garcia, absolutely on point, everything he did. Uh, just worked for him, was able to nullify everything that Perez did as we watched the, the replay of the final seconds. And, and Silos Garcia, to his credit, there was a stand-up, but to his credit, you know, Garcia was still looking to move forward. He, I think he knew he was comfortably ahead and could have cruised, but he was still looking for the finish. So, you know, listen, fun fight here. This is a, 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 kind of a heavily anticipated fight here between these two. And, and I think Silos Garcia, again, maybe the judge will prove us wrong, but I, I think he looked really, really sharp. Yeah, it's kind of the mark of a great fighter in the making when you go, okay, he's got a huge reach advantage. Certainly he's going to have a strength disadvantage when this goes to the ground. And that proves to just not be the case. So he's able to capitalize on his advantage, but doesn't ever show that he has a disadvantage in places you would expect him to. Excellent job by Silos Garcia, proving that he had everything that it takes to be a future star at MMA. Here's the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of war, we have your winner by unanimous decision, Silos!
Let's hear it one more time for Ruben Perez, ladies and gentlemen. Standing here inside the cage with your winner tonight, headlining again tonight. Your striking was amazing, was on point. Your wrestling, definitely on point, ground game. What was the game plan coming in against Ruben? Oh, sure. I, uh, you know, I knew he was going to be a wild guy, and he was a good wrestler. I, you know, I trained with people 10 times my level, so all, all, like, all my respects go out to my training partners and my coaches. I just go in there to do the work. All my, thank everybody at XC, all my family, friends, all my coaches out in Boston that could make it. Everybody will just take their time to be in there with me, even if to just say good luck or whatever. You know, I appreciate everybody. Well, thank you for competing tonight. Here's your winner, Silos Garcia. On behalf of the Orleans and the Tough Enough family, Dale, Bert, Jeff, and our brother Barry watching tonight, thank you so much for coming out. Thank you to all of our fighters, sponsors, doctors for making sure all of these fighters come back and put it all on the line for you again. The ISKA, the Nevada State Athletic Commission, the staff, and especially you, our fans. Thank you so much for coming out.